Step out, step, step in. This weekly podcast to encourage, motivate, inspire you to step out of your comfort zone, to step in to what you have been designed for and to do. Hello, this is David Joe. Please join me this and every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on my Step Out, Step In podcast, live on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube page, like, and follow me on Facebook and LinkedIn. One more favor share and comment. Hope to see you on Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Well, 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 good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and uh, I want to welcome you to episode 33 of my weekly Step Out, Step In podcast. And once again, thank you for tuning in. I want you to do me just a quick favor. If you can share the link with somebody. And... All right. So once again, thank you so much for tuning in. This is episode 33 of my weekly Step Out, Step In podcast. And uh, thank you for being here. It's a wonderful time to come your way every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And uh, just as I said, I'd like to say a big thank you to everyone who has subscribed to my YouTube page. If you haven't done so yet, please subscribe. Don't forget to click on the notification bell so that anytime I post something, you will be notified. You can also follow me on Facebook and LinkedIn. And uh, you can also support my page by clicking on the link. That's if I can post a link in the uh, comment section, which will make it easier for you to click on it. <laughs> All right, let's see here. Well, I trust you're all doing well and good and great. Another Monday. <clears throat> and I also want to say, um, oh, as a post happy Father's Day to all fathers, to all men out there for all the amazing and wonderful job you're doing as a father. Okay, let's see here. And happy Father's Day, happy Father's Day. Okay. You know, sometimes technology gets a little bit challenging. <laughs> but it's all well and good. Okay. So, I just, let me post it in here. Okay. All right. So, it says, buy me a coffee. There's a link in there. When you click on it, it will take you to the page where you can support with at least $5. And... This will help promote the page, improve the page, and all right. So buy me a coffee. 
All right, so again, my name is David Joe. I am a person of faith, a husband, a father to my wonderful biological and spiritual children. And most importantly, I am your friend. <laughs> and uh, thank you for tuning in. If you can share the link with somebody else, let's get together and let's do this together. For the past few weeks, I've been talking about the power of words. Um, last week, I dealt with Part two, I thought I was done, but then I realized I had one more to go. Um, so this is the power of words, part three. The power of words, part three. Um, if you get a chance and you want to listen to the other, other episodes, um, you can get it on my YouTube page. Um, on my YouTube page, David Joe. And um, let's see here. Okay. Right, so let's dive in for what we have today. The Power of Words, Part 3. Last week I established that words have so much power. Words have so much power. You know, when we look through the scriptures, as I said, I'm a person of faith. When we look through scriptures, God spoke the world into existence by the power of words. Our words have the power to destroy. Our words have the power to build up. And of course, the, uh, the Bible says that the tongue has the power of life and death. So that tells me that everything that you speak, you say, has the ability to either make or unmake. Let me say this as a believer of Christ and as a child of God. Your words must be used to speak life and to praise and glorify God. Let me say that again as a child of God and as a believer of Christ. Your words must be used to speak life into people and to praise and glorify God. You are the sum total of what you speak and what you say to yourself. Your words are a container for power. Your words are a container for power. You know, the, the words we say, the words we speak, the words we hear have a tremendous impact in our lives. And looking at this generation or our generation, I think this is one of the generations where we speak um, where we use more words than any time in human history. And it, it is all because of social media. <laughs> it's all because of social media. The words that are flying constantly is gradually shaping our world, ladies and gentlemen. Now, when we look in the Bible, now when we search through this Bible, words are powerful. In fact, the first mention of words came from God. God was the first to speak. If we look at Genesis chapter 1 and verse 3, the Bible says, And God said, Let there be light, and there was light. The term God said occurs ten times in Genesis 1 alone. You know, and God created you and I with the same ability to use words. He created you and I with the same ability to use words. When God said, let us make man in our own image, he was saying that how you and I operate, how, um, how you and I operate is, is the same way that we do things. You know, God is our creator. God is our creator and he made us to be creative and creative through words. When we refer to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 7 says that, And the Lord God formed man, out of, formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into, the nostrils, into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living being. Now, this is the New King James Version. 
Now, when we look at the King James Version, it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into, the nost into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. That is why you and I are made up of the body, soul, and the spirit. You know, so when we look at this scripture, the, the literal Hebrew says that a man became a speaking spirit. God created you in his image and after his likeness, and you and I became a speaking spirit because our words matter. You know, how God creates is how you and I become creative on earth. And we become creative with words by words. In, in, in Genesis 2 and verse 19, it says, Out of the ground the Lord formed every beast of the field and every bed of the earth and brought them to Adam. So he brought them to Adam to see what he will call them, words. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, words. He says he brought all the birds of the, or, or, of the air, he, he, um, birds of the air and brought, I mean, every creature he, had, he, he created, and he brought them to Adam and see what he will call them. Now listen to the second part of that. It says, and whatever Adam called each living creature, that was its name. Words. Whatever Adam named, that became the name of that living creature. God didn't, God didn't, God didn't step in to change any, any names, which Adam named zebra, crocodile, tiger, snake, and all that. Everything under every creature that Adam named, that was what? That was the name they, they maintained. So, and, and do you know that, as I said, God did not name anything. And whatever Adam called every living creature, that was its name. Words. So it tells me that your words, my words, are so powerful. And they're meaningful. So everything you are speaking, you are empowering Anything you say, everything you say, as you speak, you empower. Everything you speak, everything you say, you empower. Don't let us forget that. We are, we are, the, the, we, we are the only creatures of God, or the only creation of God, who have been given the power to use words to shape destiny. There is power behind your words. There is power behind my words. You know, from divinity to humanity, words are so powerful. Now, I'll be doing a, a lot of references in the scriptures as, as a person of faith. So please bear with me. In Exodus chapter 20, I wish I could project all these uh, scriptures in there, but we're, we're, I'm working on it. <laughs> in Exodus, Exodus chapter 20 and uh, verse 1, that is when God gave the Ten Commandments. And the Bible says that, And God spoke all these words saying, You know, God spoke all these words saying, Words. Now the Ten Commandments, uh, God spoke every one of them. And God spoke all these words saying, And these words are what governs us. He gave Israel, the, the, the Ten Commandments, and to govern us, to govern them and to govern us. You know, so let, let the word of Christ be on your tongue every day. <laughs> that is an encouragement that I'm giving to somebody that let the word of, let the word of Christ be on your tongue every single day, every day. Now, when we look at Proverbs chapter 30 and verse 5, it says that every word of God is pure. He is a shield to those who put their trust in Him. God will shield you. He will protect you. He will preserve you. But He says that every word of God is pure. 
So we have to be dependent on God's word. You and I will have to be dependent on God's word. In Isaiah 55 and verse 11, the Bible says that, So shall my words be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. Now listen to this. It says, it shall not return to me void. The word void means empty. So every word that proceeds out of your mouth, it has to accomplish something. That is why you and I cannot play with words. We cannot be careless with words. We cannot joke with words. You know, it says that, but it shall accomplish what I please. Now, this is what God was saying, that every word that comes out of his mouth, it has to accomplish something. It doesn't go and come back empty. It says, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So, you and I carry the likeness and the image of God. And if God's word goes out and doesn't come back empty, so are your words. That is why you and I will have to be very careful and concerned about what we speak. You know, my, my spiritual father always puts it this way that nobody can misquote your silence. If you don't understand, it's better to zip up and not say anything. <laughs> and, and, and in Matthew 24 and... Matthew 24 and, and verse 35, it says that heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. This is what God's word promises us, that heaven and earth will definitely pass what away. God's word promises. But his word will not pass away. God's word will not pass away. So it tells you how powerful words are and how powerful God's word is. In, in John 6 and 63, it says it that it definitely pass away. God's <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> in John 6 and 63, it says that it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The word that I speak to you are spirit and they are life. Now, these are the words of Jesus. It says it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh does not profit anything, but the words that Christ speaks, it contains, it has the spirit and it has life. So God's word has the ability to, to produce life. You know, so, so people, let's, let's, oh, should I say people of God? <laughs> let's, let's understand that words are so powerful. Words are so powerful. Now, when we look at Hebrews 4.12 from the New International Version, it says that for the words that I speak, for the word of God is alive and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. It penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joint and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. It says, for the word of God is alive and active. The word of God is alive and it is active. It is sharper than any two-edged sword. Now, if you look at the two-edged sword, both, both ends cut, both sides cut. And if it's saying that the word of God is quick and sharper, it is alive, it is active, and it is sharper than a two-edged sword, that you and I know how powerful words are. So, words that are spoken... Words that are heard, they, they impact us more than you will ever know. They impact us that you will ever know or you will ever understand. Words can change the atmosphere. Now, when I say words can change the atmosphere, sometimes there are places that you go to. And because sharp words have been spoken, 
I mean, when, when couples are angry and they are throwing words around and about. Sometimes some of these words changes the atmosphere, charges the atmosphere. You enter the place and you know, mm, no, this place is it, it, it's, 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 it's so heavy. Because certain kinds of words have been released into the atmosphere. Our words carry life. Our words carry death. Our words carry faith. Our words carry fear. Our words carry encouragement. Our words carry discouragement. And, and what you should never forget is words are never neutral, ladies and gentlemen. There's no such thing as neutral words. You know, I tell people that words are just like when you go to the restaurant and you get seated. The menu is presented to you. You go through the menu. The, the waiter or the server comes in, um, ask for your order. And what the order you place is what is delivered to you. Whatever you, you place, what, the order you place is what is delivered to you. That is how powerful your words are. That is how powerful your words are. And, and once what you speak goes out of your mouth, <laughs> they go to accomplish something. You know, it, it doesn't come back empty. It doesn't come back void. You might be joking with the words, but the words don't know you're joking. <laughs> so all because words don't know you, you're joking. Words don't know, oh, this is a playful time, so let me release. Once it goes out of your mouth, it is gone. It has to come back and accomplish something. I said last week about this uh, gentleman who shared his testimony. Um, he, uh, um, he, was, he was a survivor of a shooting in a club. And... He said he was in the bathroom where, when the gunman entered and started shooting in the club. He managed to sneak into the bathroom. He, he was hiding in the bathroom with another gentleman. The gentleman got on the phone, called his mom and said, Mom, I'm going to die. There's a gunman shooting. I'm going to die. I'm going to die. He said he almost, uh, he wanted to shout at him and say, shut up. But he was hiding in there. And he said the gunman entered the bathroom, two of them in there. He said he's, he's, he believed the gunman saw him. But what happened? He shot the one that was confessing, I am going to die. And he walked out. What we speak has the ability to impact us. In Isaiah 55 and verse 11, it says that, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void. The word void means empty but it shall accomplish what I please and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. So let's be mindful of our words and the words we speak. Oh, thank you, Nana. Uh, it's been a long time. It's been a really long time. I trust you're doing well and great. I'll try calling the other time. Or, um, we will connect after this. Yeah. Okay. And so Ephesians 4.29 tells us that do not let any unwholesome, other verses says that do not let any corrupt communication, any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. But only what is helpful and for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. You know, in this, in this context, the Apostle Paul was selling the church of Ephesus, and he, he was showing them, as well as us, the power of words, being both destructive and constructive. It says the word on hope means something that is bad in its essence uh, and, and, and nature. Ugly, disgusting. In the Greek, that is what it means, unwholesome words. So in other words, Paul is saying and, and that these things can come in in your, in your head. 
all right you can have the thought of it but don't let it come out of your mouth <laughs> just the thought of it but don't let it come out of your mouth again thank you thank you thank you Nana. okay yeah says you can you can think about it but don't let it come out of your mouth god bless you too because the only person that knows our thoughts is god satan doesn't know your thoughts he only acts on the things that comes out of your mouth that is why the bible also warns that be careful what you say be careful what comes out of your mouth and and once you unleash these words you can cause damage to people and to the environment Says your, your words should benefit those that are hearing you. Now, of course, sometimes we hear ourselves, <laughs> and and so the words you, the words that you speak should also benefit you. You can think about it, but don't don't let it come out of it because the moment you unleash it, the moment you release it, it is gone. It has to accomplish what you said it must do. The unwholesome words. The unwholesome words. You know, and, 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 you know, and sometimes the texts we send, the emails, the WhatsApp messages, um, the, the, uh, the social media comments. Sometimes these social media comments can be really, some people can be very mean. You know, every now and then um, I go on social media, I look at live um, events and I look at the comments that are, people are just throwing in there. And some people can be really, really and very, very mean. Uh, and, and I wonder, why do you have to be mean and pass these mean comments? You know, the psalmist said in Psalm 141 and verse 3, it says, Set a guard, O Lord, over my mouth. Keep watch over the door of my lips. Keep watch over the door of my mouth. It says, Set a guard. It says, Set a guard right he's saying i set a guard oh lord over my mouth the psalmist knew why he was saying that because he didn't want to say anything that can come back to to destroy him see then teach me what to say guard my mouth that i will not say anything unwholesome anything corrupt anything vulgar anything rotten but set a guard over my heart over my mouth sorry which means that you may think about it but keep the thoughts to yourself don't give words to your thoughts and your feelings now sometimes we we allow words to just fly out of our mouth and <laughs> because of how we feel and, and 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 because of our feelings and 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 our our, our thoughts what do you think about somebody Proverbs 12 and 18 it says that the, there is one who speaks like a piercing of the sword. But the tongue of the wise promotes health. You know, the piercing of a sword. Now, when a sword is pierced through somebody, it can easily kill the person. And there are people whose words are just like that. I mean, they speak and they say things that can kill people. Sharp. They have, sometimes we say they, <laughs> they have a sharp tongue. But the Bible says that the tongue of the wise promotes health. I pray that your tongue will be that of a wise person that will promote health in the lives of people, including yourself. Sometimes people will... Um, they will not assassinate you with, 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 with a gun or anything, but they can assassinate you with their words. Proverbs 18 and 21 also says that death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. So if you love death, <laughs> guess what? That is what you speak. If you like, if you love life, you speak life. 
even in situations that seems to be dead. The power of life and death is resident on the tongue. So that is why you and I will have to watch our words. Watch your words. Watch, watch what you say, what you speak. And remember, let's remember this, that whoever, whoever is informing you is forming you. Why am I saying this? Because whoever you give your ears to has the ability to shape you with your words. You and I need a tongue that is controlled by the Holy Spirit. You know, Ephesians 4, 29, again, from the New International Version, what I read earlier was the King James for the New International Version. It says that, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up. For building others up according to their needs. Everybody has a need. We are needy people. <laughs> for building people up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. It may benefit those who listen. According to their needs, that it will benefit those who listen. So let the power of your words and let the power of the words that you and I speak shape others in a positive way that their lives will be impacted by your words <laughs> positively. You know, so let's let's look at a few things here. Um, what the power of words make when we speak, um, when we speak. So, um, I say that the, the the power of words make you speak the things that are number one helpful, the things that are helpful. And and I want to say something that from today can can you and I. Determine that your words will be helpful and not hurtful. No matter how no matter how angry you are, upset, let your words be helpful, not hurtful. My words must become a form of ministry to people's life. When somebody is hurting, just one word of encouragement can lift the person up. Sometimes we have no idea where people find themselves. We have no idea of people who are sitting at the knife edge of insanity waiting for just one word of encouragement to stop them from committing the suicide. Sometimes we have no idea. And sometimes we even contribute to to those people who are sitting at the knife edge of insanity to speed it up because of our hateful words. Let's speak only that which is helpful, that which will build people up. You know, the word helpful in the Greek means inherent goodness. Goodness is also one of the fruit of the Spirit in Galatians 5. And, and what comes out of our mouth is as a result of the condition of the heart. Because the Bible says that out of the, out of the abundance of the heart, <laughs> the mouth speaks. You know. And so out of the abundance of the heart, let your mouth speak words that are encouraging. Words that will build up, words that will he help and not hurt. If, if you cannot say anything good about somebody, some people, please, let me make this appeal. Just zip up. <laughs> it is better for you not to say anything than to say something that might be hurtful. Let the power of your words make you speak the things that are number two that build up others in effect your words must never tear people down your words must build people up 
in the Greek, the word build up means edify. It is, it is like making people stronger. It is building, it is like building a house on a strong foundation. You edify, build up. In, in Romans chapter 15 and verses 1 and 2, it says that from the New King James Version, we have, we then who are strong ought to bear with, with the scruples of the weak and not to please ourselves. Let each of us please his neighbor for his good leading to edification. So let each of us please his neighbor for his good leading to edification. It says, we then who are strong. And of course, we all have our strengths. We all have our weaknesses. Everybody has a strength and a weakness, ladies and gentlemen. That is why it is good for us to find ourselves in the assembly of believers. Because when we gather, your strength strengthens my weakness. My strength strengthens your weakness. We build each other up. We edify each other. So when we go to church and, and, and or any Christian gathering, we have individuality and a corporate life. You go in as an individual, but when we gather, we have a corporate life. And that this is where we hold the hands of everyone. Most especially those who are strong will have to hold the hands uh, and encourage those who are weak. And we walk alongside with them to strengthen them in, in, in their weakness and in the situation in which they find themselves to make them stronger. You know, the body of Christ is to help build up others, not to tear down. Not to take advantage, but to help build others. And please, let's take note of that. In Galatians chapter 6 and verse 1, Galatians 6 and verse 1 and from the New International Version says, Brothers and sisters, if someone is caught in a sin, <laughs> if someone is caught in a sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore. Now listen to this. You who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. But what we what we see, I mean, we 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 <laughs> instead of restoring them gently, we 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 humiliate them. The reason why you and I are still here is because we haven't been caught yet. <laughs> it's just like um, Jesus was teaching early in the morning in the synagogue when these people interrupted or disrupted his teachings, throwing a half-naked woman and telling Jesus that she was caught in the, in the very act of adultery. Now, my question to these people is, if, if they were here, I would have asked them, how did they know that she was caught in adultery? And of course, it takes two to tangle. Was, she wasn't the only one. What happened to the man that they, they caught her with? But they dragged the woman, the wicker vessel, and they threw her before Jesus, asking um, Jesus to condemn her so they could start a rock concert. But Jesus being all merciful, Jesus being all forgiven, didn't say a word right there, but started writing in the sand. Now, I believe that the reason why he, he wrote in the sand was because even though the Bible doesn't really tell us what exactly he was writing, but every one of them read and they started dropping their, uh, um, their, their rocks. He said, he who hasn't committed a sin should cast the first stone. They all had things that they had done, which I believe people didn't know. It was hidden, but when Jesus started writing, because he was all-knowing, he's all-knowing, he started writing it in the sun so he could erase their sins. Because he wasn't writing on anything that would have been permanent. He wrote it in the sun. And as he wrote the sin, whatever he wrote in the sun, as they read it, you know, 
I believe he was writing the sins of everyone too. If you read yours, you just drop your rock <laughs> and you walk away. If you read yours, you drop your rock and you walk away. And finally he said, where are your accusers? He asked the woman who the claim she was caught in the very act. He says, if they did not condemn you, I will not condemn you. Go and sin no more. So, ladies and gentlemen, when someone is caught in sin, you who live by the Spirit should restore that person gently. Not spread it all over on social media. Now, social media has become the number one place where everything goes out there. Now, some people will even cough and put it on social media. I just coughed. <laughs> says restore the person gently but watch yourself now that is a warning that jesus gave um paul was telling the, the it, it says but watch yourselves or you also may be tempted now sometimes we think we are uh, super um, superhuman beings that uh, you know i says watch yourself or you also may be tempted Speak words that will benefit others. Speak words that will benefit others. You know, every, every gift that God gives you is to build up the church. When I talk about the church, it, it is not a building. It is not the structures that the church constitutes of you and I. You are the body of Christ and you are the church of God. So the words that we speak, the gift, every gift God gives you is to build up the church, the body of Christ. In 1 Corinthians 14, 12, it says that even so, even so you, since you are zealous for spirit, for for spiritual gifts, let it the, let it before let it before the edification of the church that you seek to excel. The edification of the church, the building up of the church, that you will seek to excel. So let your gifts build the church. Let your words build one another. You know, so let the power of, of words make you to speak the things that are according to the needs of others. That are according to the needs of others. Now let me say this, as a minister of the gospel and as a child of God and people of God, our primary goal, your primary goal, your primary commission is to meet the needs of others we all want to grow and make the body of Christ and the church of God a loving place most especially for the unchurched sometimes I, I sit back and ask why do people no longer want to associate themselves with the church sometimes it's because of our attitude but you and I can always make a difference you and I can always make a difference. We can make a difference where we will gravitate towards the own church and we can meet their needs. With the, we can love them as who they are, not be judgmental. So our primary concern as ministers is to help the needs of others. In Exodus chapter 3 and verse 7 and 8, from the New King James Version, it says that, And the Lord said, I have surely seen the oppression of my people. Now, this is God speaking. He is all-knowing. And yet he says, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt. And I have heard their cry because of their task masters, for I know their sorrow. And the verse 8 says, So I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians. Now, this was something that God had prophesied years ahead that Israel was going to be in bondage for 400 years. They spent 430 years. And now God is saying, I have 
surely seen. The God who is all-knowing says that I have surely seen. The God who is all-knowing says that I have heard. The God who is all-knowing says that now I know their sorrow. <laughs> so God is saying that he had seen, he had heard, and he knows their sorrow. So this tells you and I something. It tells us something, that when we have seen, when we have heard, and when we know the needs of others, God has given you a ministry. That's a ministry that God has given you. When you, when you hear, when you know, and when you, when you see, when you hear, and when you know, God has given you a ministry. I was telling somebody the other time that um, my wife and I, we have met the needs of quite a lot of people. And the only people that know are those that we help, ourselves and God. We've never posted it anywhere. We've never discussed it with anyone. You don't have to. All we have to do is to do it unto God. You know, of course, I mean, some of them never came back to say thank you, but it didn't hurt us because we didn't do it for them. We did, we did it unto God. And that is what makes the difference. It makes a difference when you do it unto God. Because if the people never came back to say thank you, it happened to Jesus. He, um, ten lepers, he told them, go show yourself to the priest. On their way, they all got healed. Nine went their way, one came back. Jesus asked, where is the other nine? <laughs> you know, so when you do it unto God, you don't get disappointed when you don't get a thank you. Sir. Because God will bless you no matter what. And when God gives you the opportunity to see certain things in the lives of other people, you have a ministry. You know, John was the only disciple of Christ who saw the nakedness of Jesus. He was the only disciple of Christ who saw the nakedness of Jesus when he was crucified. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus was crucified but naked. You know, it is just for, just to uh, make it look a little bit um, on sensor. That is why in, in the pictures we see, they put a, what they call it, some kind of, um, uh, rag around his waist but in the, when you read the scriptures you know the, the Romans really mustered crucifixion it was it was a, a form of uh, capital punishment but they used it as a form of entertainment as well and every one of them they crucified they crucified them naked John was the only one that saw the nakedness of Jesus and God gave him a ministry. So I'm saying that when God gives you the opportunity to see the nakedness of someone, you have a ministry to cover it up. You know, what makes relationships work? What makes relationships work is when um, we look beyond the faults and the shortcomings of people and see their needs. When you see the needs of, of, when you see the need and speak words of encouragement and comfort, tell the, 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 the person it will be okay. Words of assurance, <laughs> you know. And every now and then we all need it. I mean, you and I need those words of encouragement, words of assurance. And I lost my dad over the weekend just this past Saturday night. And since then, I've, I've received numerous calls, text messages, for, um, social media postings, WhatsApp um, postings and all that. And all these are words of encouragement. I'm not saying I don't need, I need them. It encourages me. And it makes me know that, yes, these are people that are standing with you no matter what. These are people that are standing with you in good times and in challenging times. 
And of course, I want to take this opportunity to also thank everyone for the phone calls, for the text messages, for the social media postings, these messages of encouragement, uh, for sending your love, uh, care, encouragement, comfort. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I remember a friend of mine lost um, her dad some time ago. And um, I happened to talk to her and she said she got a, a call when the dad passed away. She got a call from another friend. And what a friend said that, oh, welcome to, um, welcome to the fatherless club. How insensitive people can be. You know, everybody grieves differently. If you don't have anything to say, just be quiet. I said it early on, just zip up. <laughs> you know, because everybody grieves differently. Let's speak into the good of people. Let's speak into the need of people. And, let's, and, and speak and let people know that they can become who God has destined them to be. God calls us a chosen generation. He calls us a royal priesthood. He calls us a peculiar people. He calls us a holy nation. Why? Because he is speaking to us what we can become. Let the power of your words make you speak the things that benefit those who hear. You know, the word benefit means grace. <laughs> You know, it means grace. We all need the amazing grace of God. We all need the amazing grace of God. It looked so all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words. Now listen to this. The gracious words which, proceed, which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, is this not Joseph's son? Now, at a point, Jesus, they refer to him as Joseph's son. They refer to him as the carpenter's son. They refer to him as a carpenter. But they marveled at the gracious words, the gracious words that came out of his mouth, that proceeded out of his mouth. The encouraging words. Now, you and I have to learn to speak graciously. Speak those words that will benefit the hearer. My question to you tonight is who is hearing you who is listening to you and who are you influencing with your words are you influencing with your words again thank you so much for tuning in just give me a moment oh, and i'll be right back let's see if this is going to work okay and thank you so much for tuning in uh, we'll be right back All right, so again, thank you for tuning in. Oh, shalom. <laughs> All right, so let's do this real quick and as a wrap up. Oh, I just got a few minutes left. So when you speak, who hears you? Number one, God hears you when you speak. In Malachi chapter 3 and verse 16, it says that, Then those who fear the Lord spoke to one another, and the Lord listened and heard them. So a book of remembrance was written before him for those who fear the Lord and, and who meditate in his name. So when you speak, God hears you. Whatever you say, God hears you. And whatever you speak, the Lord hears, and a book of remembrance is, is, is written and has been written before God. You know, last week I said in, in, in it that the Bible says that we'll give an account of every word that proceeds out of our mouth. So when it gets to that place, there's nothing like, I forgot, I, uh, I can't re recall 
I can recollect. No, no, you will give an account. So everything that you say, God hears you. And the book of remembrance is open for you. When you speak, others hear your words. What are your words doing to people? And I encourage not, I encourage not to encourage gossipers in your life. I'm encouraging you not to encourage gossipers in your life. <laughs> And, 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 and when others hear you in your words, are your words encouraging or discouraging? And number three, when you speak, you hear your own words. So number one, God hears you. Number two, others hear you. Number three, you hear your own words. When you hear your own words, do, do you see yourself as a winner and a conqueror? Or as a defeated foe. You know, the Bible says that, and David encouraged himself. That was when um, he was rejected by fighting with the Philistines with his men, and they came back to Ziklag, and everything of theirs had been stolen away, had been taken away by the Amalekites. The Bible says that they cried until they had no more strength to weep. And But David encouraged himself in the Lord. He became his own cheerleader. Sometimes you will have to become your own cheerleader. Your words should turn you into your own cheerleader. I surrender. I say step out of every distraction and step in. To being focused. I always say that you are so unique. You are so amazing. You are so peculiar. There's something amazing about you. And the world needs your unique gift, talents, and abilities. You don't have to leave this world with those gifts, talents, and abilities are still unwrapped inside you. And again, thank you so much for watching and for tuning in to the Step Out Step In podcast live on Facebook, YouTube, and LinkedIn. If you happen to watch the replay, I say thank you. And don't forget to subscribe to my Step Out Step In podcast. Comment, share, click on the Buy Me a Coffee link <laughs> to support this page. And um, all right, so just before I sign off, let me do this real quick. Uh, let's see here. Let me, let me do a rundown through this. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, please leave more comments. Um, nice ones, though. <laughs> We're just talking about words. <laughs> okay, so let's see here. All right, we'll be right back. Watch the space. Hey, this is David. I'm a pastor at All Nations Church, Virginia, located down here in Stafford, Virginia. I want to personally invite you to worship with us this Sunday. When you get here, you find a welcoming family. You participate in our uplifting praise and worship songs. You also hear a Christ centered dynamic. We are a church to come discover where we are restoring people and releasing their potential by connecting them to God. And we are located at 1449 Courthouse Road, Stafford, Virginia. And the zip code is 22554. We'll see you this Sunday at 2 p.m. All right, so just yeah, as you heard, um, I want to personally invite you to worship with us every Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time at 1449 Courthouse Road and Stafford, Virginia with All Nations Church, Virginia. For more information, you can always visit us on the web www.allnationsva.org. All right, and... Um, okay. I also want to introduce my spiritual father, Dr. Franco Fusua Pierre. On Tuesdays, every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, on the Ambassador of Hope page on, on Facebook and YouTube, um, he started a series on discovering your one thing. Everybody has a one thing. What is your one thing? 
discovering your one thing and these teachings are epic and i want to personally invite you to tune in every tuesday at 6 p.m eastern standard time live with ambassador of hope on on youtube and i think youtube is franco fusopia the official and facebook is the ambassador of hope and these teachings are life-changing, destiny-shaping teachings. I know people um, pay thousands of dollars to go listen to something that he's giving to us for free. Don't come on alone. Invite somebody. Come on, let's, let's, let's do this together. Invite a friend, invite a family member. Um, bring your notebook, your notepad, your tablet, iPad. Um, take notes. And um, yes. And from July 19th to the 23rd is our um, flagship Ion Shopping's Ion Leadership Conference. You know, this is a conference I've been attending for a couple of years now. And I can, I can attest to it that my life has not been the same ever since I started. You know, one of the best and one of the, the important things you can do for yourself is to invest in yourself. You know, and invest in yourself. You know, the Bible says that buy knowledge and sell it not. So it is good to buy knowledge. <laughs> invest in yourself. So uh, from the 19th of July to the 23rd of July at Longerville, Georgia, at All Nations Carries House. Um, and if you look at the lineup, these uh, um, seasoned leadership conference um, speakers and teachers. We have Dr. Mesa Otabel, Dr. Samchand. Um, we have Apostle Jenna Alcon and um, Bishop um, Courtney McBath. And of course, our conference host is Dr. Frank and Reverend Mary of Fusuapia. And on the Saturday, there's going to be a musical concert with Nathaniel Bassi. Please, please, please don't, don't, don't kick the iron ball uh, for not attending this. I highly recommend this to you. Our church leaders and, and pastors bring your leaders along, our business um, Owners, bring your, bring your workers along. Let them learn. It is not only for the church. This is something that cuts across your, your entire lifestyle. It helps you in every area of your life. All right, so let's, let's be there from July 19th to the 23rd, 2023. Our flagship leadership conference, Ion Shopping, Ion Shopping Zion 2023. Let's get ready. For registration, please go to um, www. You can download the, the app from the Apple um, Store or Google Play Store, um, Advanced Life. Um, it has all the, 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 the program listed on it. I have already downloaded the app. So go on there, download it. You can even register through the app. Let's go and let's be prepared to attend. All right. I think that, okay, so once again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Thank you so much for tuning in and um, tuning in to the live podcast on YouTube, Facebook, and LinkedIn. And again, 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 don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube page. Follow me on Facebook and LinkedIn. Click the like, share, comment, support by buying me a coffee. Let's connect again on Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and let's watch this pace. And again, I wish all fathers a wonderful, happy Father's Day. It only happened yesterday, but okay. So let me say a post happy Father's Day. <laughs> and until we meet again, have a wonderful, amazing, fruitful, and productive week. This is David Joe saying goodbye for now. <laughs>